can't fail. It's utterly impossible. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Timothy 4 with me tonight. In my estimation, I would consider what I'll be talking about tonight to be one of the most important things that I've covered in some time. I pray that you'll listen prayerfully and attentively to what I have to say. 1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Now the Spirit, capital S, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. Now note carefully, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Father, bless this holy word tonight. Give me unction, Lord. Give me wisdom in the scripture. And our Father, we pray that you give the folks a heart, Lord, that's, that's receptive, that wants to hear. In thy holy name we pray, amen. You can be seated. As I've said to you before, this is a spiritual thing. There's no way to get out from it. It's you either uh, are energized or empowered by the spirit of the living God or by a demon or the devil. So uh, when you deal with issues like I'm going to be talking about tonight, you've got to ask yourself one simple question. Which side is this coming from? Is this coming from the side of light or darkness? And you have no in-between. There's no gray areas, either light or darkness. And so uh, I'm going to be talking about it in a moment. Now, how many of you young people in here to know when I say Charlie, Charlie, know what I'm talking about? All right, look at the hands go up. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Charlie, Charlie. And some of you are afraid your parents might know <laughs> if you raise your hand. I'm not trying to trap you. I'm simply doing a survey. Now, how many of you folks in here tonight don't have a clue what I'm talking about when I say Charlie, Charlie? All right. <laughs> Vast majority. Say, what are you talking about, preacher? How many of you know what a Ouija board is? All right. You all know what that is. And I uh, pray that you've never messed with one. If you have, I pray that you've gotten right with God and put it behind you. And, uh, and maybe you had to deal with a demon that you conjured up by, by uh, dealing with a Ouija board. Charlie Charlie is taking two pencils or pens or something of that nature and crossing them like this. All right? They're lying on a flat surface. Two pencils lying on a flat surface. You've drawn a square, and in the square you've segregated four separate sections. One says yes, one says no, another one says yes, another no. However you want to lay it out, the picture of a person, whatever, you're asking for an answer. You draw the square, you put the pencils inside the square, and then you say, Charlie, Charlie, and you ask it a question. Are you real? Uh, this afternoon, I viewed on YouTube a number of kids who were innocently enough playing with Charlie Charlie and when something began to happen that they knew was out of their control these little girls began to scream and run from the room so what happened the pencils are crossed there is no wind there's nothing in that room moving at all to affect what's about to happen but when they ask him a question they move and they may point to one place or another place in the square. When the kids see this happen, they know they didn't do it physically, nor nothing else in that room did it physically. I watched them as they scream and they ran out of the room. So what are you talking about, preacher? Charlie Charlie is supposed to be a Mexican demon. They're supposed to be conjuring up a Mexican demon to answer their request. We live in a generation where they have no spiritual training. There is no foundation, no background. They come from homes that are, that are completely uh, humanistic and hedonistic for the most part. The parents absolutely don't have a clue. They don't know what's going on. The kids aren't taken to church. They hear no preaching. They do not read the Bible. They don't pray. In plainer words, they have no spiritual, no spiritual uh, foundation in their homes. And any new fad that comes down the line of pipe, they're ready to try it. Now, you and I tonight, if we're Bible-believing Christians, we know what's going on. I pray that what I just did does not prompt some child in here to go try it. I pray it doesn't prompt you to go try it. I warn you, it's not an innocent game. 
It's not like flipping marbles and, and playing uh, 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 chess or something of that nature. This is real stuff, a sinister thing. And what you're doing is tapping into the spirit world and they are all the ready to respond. Charlie, Charlie. Now there's a website and that website, I think it's New Hollywood, I've got it here. Then I got all of this from, uh, from doing some research on the internet. And I haven't had months and weeks to do this, only a few hours. But there's a website that lists five other demons, spirits, entities that you can conjure up and names them. And uh, you say, well, now, you know, preacher, I really don't believe in the spirit world like that. I just believe it's an innocent childlike game and, and there's really, you know, there's really nothing to it. Then how do you explain all of the murders that's going on today where children are killing their parents? In one case, the boy stood over his mother after he'd killed his daddy. His mother, he got to his mother next. He stood over her. He'd already shot her, shot her with a 22 revolver a number of times. She was crawling on her hands and her knees trying to get away from him. And he stood over the top of her with that 22, uh, 22 pistol in his hand and said, Die, you expletive, and shot her to death. Did he get that in school? Where did he get that? In Sunday school? Did he get that in prayer meeting? Did he get that in reading his Bible? Did he get that in fellowship with other Christian young people? Where did he get that? He got that from the dark world. That's where he got it from. He's not an isolated case. Many, 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 many times throughout this country and Canada and throughout the world, children are murdering their parents. And children are murdering other children. We read these stories uh, time and time and time again, how they'll find some little four, five, six-year-old child and beat it to death just to watch the blood fly and observe the child when it takes its last breath on this earth. And they get some sort of a sinister satisfaction from that. Where'd that come from? Charlie Charlie is opening the door like CERN, Switzerland. Instead of, instead of physicist, instead of theoretical physicist, instead of quantum physicist, instead of some of the sharpest minds in the world who say that there's something that could come through this black hole to where we are, or we could send something from where we are, from where we are through this black hole, we have children that are messing around with a spirit world that's going to bite them. Now think about it for a minute. The Bible said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible said these things are written that you might believe, believing have an everlasting life. The Lord Jesus said in John 6, the words that I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is a spiritual thing. You take it into your heart, believe it, get on your knees and cry out to God and say, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save my soul, he'll save you. And the world of light comes into your heart then. The good side, the Lord moves in. And that, and, that, and that parent murdering spirit moves out. Right. Or that spirit that wants to beat to bludgeon to death, some little old child's gone. One case I read about this afternoon, some young girl, 15, 14, 15 years old. They came upon her, beat her, they beat her, bludgeoned her. And she cried out for mercy, said, please don't beat me like this. They cr and cried out and cried out. They continued to beat till the blood was flying from her face, walked away. She got away from them for a while. They came back and they finished the job. That's called bloodlust. Bloodlust. They continued to beat her until the little thing died. I can't imagine what it feels like to beat somebody to death, to watch them draw their last breath. I pray unto the Lord God, that never happens to me. I pray I never lose my mind and go off the deep end somewhere where that happens to me. But let me tell you something tonight. My flesh is like your flesh. It's like, it's like the flesh of Adolf Hitler. It's like the flesh of Benito Mussolini and Joseph Stalin. It's like the flesh of any of all flesh is flesh, the Bible says. There is no difference between my flesh, your flesh, and the flesh of the murderer on death row right now. That includes my fleshly mind, your fleshly mind, and everybody's fleshly mind. There is no difference. I know that that's gonna shake some personal self-righteousness, but it's a fact. I don't care how beautiful you are in your church, how many medals you got hanging from your chest, how great you are in your religion, your flesh is like my flesh. If he's the Pope in Rome, there's no difference. Flesh is flesh. 
It was born flesh, live flesh, die flesh, and rot flesh in this earth. It came from the earth. It goes back to the earth. It'll never be any more than the earth. But thanks be unto God tonight for his unspeakable gift, for the Holy Ghost that dwells in my soul, that saved me and wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am not what I used to be. Because of the one that dwells in me tonight, I know the difference between what I used to be and what I am today. As Paul said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. I am what I am by God's marvelous grace. But six, seven, eight, nine, ten-year-old kids don't know that. These young ones don't know that. They're born into a culture that has long since rejected Christ and turned from the truth and turned to darkness. They're born into a culture that from day one begins to brainwash them and create within them what this culture thinks they ought to be. It's such a shame. It's such a shame tonight that you can't exercise absolute control over your child as to what it is, as where it's educated, who its friends will be, uh, whether it gets a shot or not, whether it goes here, or whether it goes there. The Department of Human Services, DHS, will step in and make no mistake about this tonight. And I warn you, I'm telling you, I'm warning you. If the government comes against you and wants to take your child away from you, they will take your children out of your home from underneath your nose while they are screaming and kicking. They'll drag them through the front door because the United States government has become big brother. Well, that's 10 years down the road, preacher. That's right now. All it takes is somebody bringing an accusation against you to the DHS, say something to the folks downtown, and they don't have to say anything to anybody. They can come in and take your child from your home immediately and put it in foster care until the issue is resolved. It ought not be so. Well, one of the reasons that it's come to that is because of what's been happening in the homes, the way children are being abused today, because it's hard to find good parents anymore. Just because you brought somebody into the world biologically doesn't make you a good parent. Doesn't make you a good parent. The, the fact of the matter is, uh, most of the parents that are adoptive parents or foster parents in cases like that, a lot of times make much better parents than the biological parents because they consciously chose to take that child and raise it and raise it up. Now, demons are real, and you know that. I don't have to convince you of that tonight. Charlie, Charlie is conjuring up demons. And here's the list, the names of the five, and the website, if you want to get on it, do a little research on your own. It's hollywoodlife.com. They now have five supernatural creatures that you and your friends can call forth at your next party. So let's get together and party, and we're going to cross some, we're going to get some, uh, we're going to cross some pencils, and we're going to have us a time and a half. But I'm going to tell you something. If you ever have a demon enter into your life, that demon doesn't leave easily. Even if you've got a house full of Bible-believing people, that demon does not leave easily. Number one, it's a spirit being. Number two, it's an intelligent spirit being. Number three, it's been around a long time, and it knows us. And the only power that's greater than it is the power that was at the cross at Calvary when the Lord Jesus shed his precious blood. And that demon knows that. And it may go away. It may make you think you have control over it. It may think your house is clean. It may go away, leave you alone, and then come back with seven more wicked demons than itself. It can happen. It's not a game. So I warn you tonight, young people, this is for instructive purposes. I am not trying to recruit you into this junk. I'm warning you, if you have tried this, some of you might have tried it. Uh, out of innocent curiosity, I'm a curious person. That's my nature. I am curious. Y'all know that by now. I'm curious. I want to know why what's ticking. I want to know what's behind it. And sometimes it gets me in trouble. But I've been saved long enough now to know to leave some things alone. But if you're a curious type person and you just innocently enough crossed you a couple of pencils and you said Charlie, Charlie and said something to it and you watched those pencils move, and you were impressed by that, let me tell you what happened. That was a wicked spirit being that is impressing you, but it is also gaining entrance into your life, and it will dominate you given enough time. It will take complete, absolute control over your life. 
children are killing children. I've got photographs of kids right here who kill their parents. Just one here, one's 12 years old. 12 years old, shot his family to death. They, they're getting younger and younger. That's why it's important for us to have camps. That's why it's important to send kids up here to Kentucky so they can go to the Museum of, of, of Creation, Creation Museum. That's why it's important to bring them Sunday school, let them get under the teaching of a, Sunday, a, good, a good loving Sunday school teacher who wants to give them the truth and tell them what's going on. That's why it's important for the church. This is why it's so important for me to do what I'm doing tonight. If I don't do this, who is? Who's going to do this if I don't get up here and tell you this tonight? Think about it. Somebody said, when I go to church, I want to hear, I want to hear something that, 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 that's encouraging. I hope this encourages you. I hope it encourages you to stay on the right track and discern the spirits that are coming into your child's life. I hope it encourages you to be very careful at the friends that your children bring home or that uh, they go see, they go visit, or they're talking to, or they're, or they're texting, or they're, uh, uh, the so I can't even keep up with the social media. It blows my mind. I can't keep up with it. And I'm pretty computer literate, but I'll tell you the truth, I can't do it. There's some, there's a stuff out there, I've been talking to people lately, I say, what does it mean to go viral? And I've had, I've had two or three different answers, and most of them are pretty consistent. I don't want to make anybody mad, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll check sources, primary sources. I'll put it all together, weigh it, consider it, and look at it. Now, how many of you folks in here my age have any idea what it means to go viral? You get the flu. That's what it is. I mean, that's viral. That's what I first thought. I thought, man, what are they making a big deal about that for? <laughs> Flu's the flu. I thought he was talking about a virus. But I, 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 it didn't take me long to find out that when they're talking about something going viral, what they're saying is that it is broadcast over social media. Am I right? It's broadcast over social media. And I understand that it's got a hashtag in front of it. Now, if you'd asked me a month ago what a hashtag was, I'd said, I don't have a clue. I know what hash brown potatoes are. <laughs> what do you mean hashtag? You see, this is my generation, folks. We don't know. We don't know. I've always said we're all ignorant of certain things. I don't know. So I've got to get in here and start digging around and reading and checking this stuff out. I know what a hashtag is now. And I know what going viral means now. I understand that. I begin to understand that the, the, I'm beginning now, I'm just beginning to really get a handle on what social media is about. I'm beginning to understand how that some of these kids, folks, live in that world. That's their world. As far as these kids are concerned, nothing else exists but social media. So, uh, you know, I, be wise to... If, you, if you're a smart parent, uh, you want to know who your kid's talking to on social media, right? Who, who they're texting and who's texting them and who, uh, what, to, what media they're on and, and social uh, networking and all that. You want to know who they're talking to, who's talking to them, right? I would, wouldn't you? I think that's important. Now, how many of you are aware of the fact tonight that what's happening is not happen chance? I want to read some stuff for you right here that's going to make you, that, that, that's going to force you to ask a simple question. If this thing is so consistent everywhere in the country, there's got to be a master plan going on. Right. right? I mean, if this is happening everywhere, there's got to be somebody engineering this. Right? Right. Anybody can take a wrecking ball and tear a building down. It takes somebody with skill to build one. I know a lot of people in ministries, wrecking ball ministry. <laughs> That's what I say an evolutionist has never built anything. That's right, buddy. He's never cut and measured and, and thought something through and figured out where this goes here and that goes there. These, they sit in their ivory towers and they, and, they, and they talk about their theories and blah, blah. They don't have a clue what real life's about. An, evolution, an evolutionist most of the time are atheists, agnostics. They are so arrogant, so arrogant. Oh, they are so condescending, patronizing, and so arrogant that they want you to know that they know the unknowable. <laughs> now think it through what I just said to you. Can you know there is a God? I know there's a God by creation, but I also know there's a God by a personal relationship with him. I know that. But for the atheist, he doesn't know there's a God, yet he knows there is no God. What a fool. 
That's why the Bible says the fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Would you listen to me and bear with me for just a minute while I read this for you tonight? It's not too long, and I'll read it quickly, and then we'll, we'll close with it. I just want you to hear this. I'll give you the website. I'll give it to you before I read it. This is a website from uh, Gene and Earlene Moody. The, the website uh, address is demonbuster.com. Now, let me warn you. A lot of people, when you say demon, evil spirit, you get into nutland, no doubt about it. You do. A lot of people, they're just plain nuts when it comes to talking about evil spirits and demons. I mean, everything's demonic. Everything's got an evil spirit in it. Everything's, you know, there's a, there's a demon under every rock and all that. They blame demonology for everything. I don't believe that, but I, I do believe the Bible. These people make sense, and, they, and they, they give a bibliography at the end of their work here so you can make your own references and cross-references. Just listen carefully as I read it for you. Uh, this lesson, basically a series of paraphrased book reports, has similarities in organizations, schools, libraries, comic books, games, cartoons, television shows, video games, movies, toys, books, music, and sports. There is an astonishing, hideous rise of devil worship, Satanism, and witchcraft among the youth. You will be shaken, startled, and disgusted. Witchcraft is on the rise throughout the world. It is surprising how many Christians are deceived concerning the dangers of witchcraft. You especially need to learn about witchcraft and the New Age movement. Now, I said this weeks ago that a New Age practitioner is a witch. And I hadn't read what these people have to say. Say, why did you say that? Because the spirit of the New Age movement, the spirit of the occult world, is a spirit of a witch. And witchcraft is the spirit of rebellion. Now note carefully. There are perhaps five to seven million active witches in America today. And another 35 million or so persons who studied or dabbled in witchcraft. Satan wants to control children from the womb and cradle to the grave. In all organizations, destroy their faith in Jesus. Take your children from you. Abuse the children. Give them an unholy childhood. Rob their brains in the classrooms. And guide the children into hardcore devil worship and witchcraft. How many agree with that? The plan promotes New Age movement and religion, rituals, idolatry, reincarnation, fantasy books, and games, white magic, black magic, sorcery, shamanism, polytheism, occult symbols, objects and idols, psychology, UFOs and extraterrestrials, witchcraft and Satan worship, astrology and horoscope, tarot card reading, Ouija boards, palm readings, fire walking, seances, mediums, spirit channeling, holistic medicine, physical tests and sports, and guided imagery and visualization. Basically, these are occultic rituals, beliefs, practices, artifacts, and objects, including butchery, violence, and sex. Shows are full of sexual license, magic, sorcery, and satanic violence and evil. Satan and the New Age plan are after the children, especially children of Christian parents. They want to destroy Christianity from humanity. There is a shocking assault, an all-out spiritual war, being currently waged against the kids by Satan's demonic legions and his New Age leadership and their millions of disciples. There are 13 doctrines of the New Age movement. I want to be careful with these because I want you to hear them. This is very important. You will begin to identify with what I'm reading. 13 of them. Number one, the children of the future will serve a one-world planetary government and live in a one-world culture. Number two, patriotism to one's country must be abolished and all national barriers destroyed in order to build a one new world order. Number three, children will accept that Eastern mystical religion 
is to be married to the Christianity of the West to forge a new unified social and religious order of universal truths. You're seeing that right now. Number four, teenagers and youth will rebel and revolt against their parents and against authority to help usher in the new age world order. Number five, youth and all of humanity must accept that the time will inevitably come when grown-ups who refuse to become part of the new age will have to be killed. They are to be considered as lowly germs and infection or blot on humanity that must be stamped out and eradicated. Number six, the, tra the traditional family unit is not desirable for the Aquarian or new age. Children belong to the government, to the world and the community, the human group, not to their parents. A new kind of family unit must inevitably come into existence. Number seven, young people must be taught to believe in reincarnation and karma, the law of rebirth, rather than the resurrection and judgment teaching of the Bible. This belief must guide behavior, especially sexual conduct. Number eight, absurd and immature notions of sin and guilt must not be imparted to children by parents, teachers, pastors, and other adults. A more permissive and worldly attitude must be adopted. Number nine, children are to be taught that all religions, Christianity, witchcraft, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, Pagism, Paganism, etc., are equally worthwhile and that it doesn't matter in which God one believes. Number 10, the new generation of youth must recognize that Jesus did not come to save or convert anyone because no one is lost. When's the last time you heard some of these nationwide gurus calling themselves Christians say to anybody that you must be born again, that you're under the curse of Adam's sin, and that you've got to be saved by the grace of God? You haven't heard it and you won't. Number 11, Christian doctrines such as that of heaven, hell, and judgment must be discarded and a theology of the Old Testament must be repudiated. Number 12, a new age world religion must be established without Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Christian church is dead and must be replaced. Number 13, the coming New Age world religion will emphasize the unity of all religions while rejecting Jesus Christ's profane, bibli profound biblical statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The plot to decompose and destroy the family unit, subvert Bible doctrine, and promote a one world New Age religion and government. The roots of New Age occultism can be traced all the way back to ancient Babylon. The unholy trinity has three divinities, father, mother, son. We see in these events the roots of several cardinal New Age doctrines, evolution, human divinity, spirit worship, reincarnation, and sexual license. And on and on and on it goes. How many of you agree with me tonight that that's what's happening? And it's happening on a universal scale. And it's consistent. Now ask yourself this simple question. If this is true, and I know it's true because I've observed it, if this, is in if this is true, then what does that say to us tonight? It says to us tonight that there is an organized, systematic effort to wipe the church of God from the face of the earth. And if it does not conform and become a new age church, which the big ones are already, the emerging church movement, the big ones, they're conforming, they're becoming... They're becoming uh, what the one world religion requires. They're, and they all do it under the banner of love. I'm a hate preacher because I'm telling you the truth tonight. But the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 13 that love rejoices in the truth. But in any event, if, if it, since this is true, then it is obvious that there is a systematic, concerted effort to brainwash your children and take them away from you They'll let you pay the bills, but they want to raise them. And then when the day comes, if necessary, they will turn your children against you 
and take you from the face of the earth. They've already, now I believe this. Here's what I believe. I believe that these planners, this, these elitists, these social uh, engineers, that engineers social, the world, the social world, our education and our, our interaction with each other and our family structures and all of that, they're engineering it. I believe that they put out test cases to see how far along that they've gotten the people, to see how far along they've brainwashed them. It was like Y2K. You remember Y2K? How many of you remember Y2K? For months we were warned that Y2K may cause airplanes to fall out of the sky. It may cause all kinds of catastrophes to happen around the world because uh, ostensibly because the computers weren't ready to handle the changeover from one millennium to another millennium and that it would mess the computer up and cause it to go haywire and so forth and so on. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen on the scale they said it would happen. But what they did do with Y2K apparently was to check the grid across the world of the interconnectedness of the computers. That did happen. In plainer words, under the ruse of planes falling from the sky, they used it for their own sinister purposes. That's what I'm trying to say to you tonight. You can't believe what these people are saying. You can't believe what they're doing. You can't believe anything. You Listen, you have what's called public consumption. The news that is for the public to consume, but it may not have anything to do with the truth. So I'm a grandfather, and I'm a father. And we've got grandparents in here tonight, and parents. I, 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 am, I am so saddened that the world that I was born into is not here today for, for our children to grow up in. I am saddened. I am saddened. We didn't have the spirit manifestations back then, the occult world. It's there. It was then. It was there. It's always been. But it wasn't on the scale that it is today. It wasn't there. But it is now. So what do we do with this tonight? <coughs> What's the point? The point is to educate you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yes. There's a lot of buzzwords that go along with this. Be, you, you, you should be conscious of them. Uh, and you hear them. You hear them. You hear the vocabulary. As it, as it comes out from the pulpit in these churches, you hear their vocabulary, and and obviously they they they're tapping into one common source. They're drinking from the same fountain. They've all got the same message with a little different spin on it. Love your children and hold them close. Hold them close. Be very careful. The books they read, the movies they go to, the stuff that they're involved with. Be very careful. The DVDs they watch. When they're on YouTube, the stuff on YouTube they watch, the social network, the social media. Be very careful at who comes into their life. You can't trust anybody anymore. This is 2015. You cannot trust anybody anymore. You've got a close, close net circle of friends here at Temple. You've got brothers and sisters in the Lord that you love. And, and if anybody on this earth you should be able to trust, you should be able to trust each other in here. And there are many Christians, no doubt in my mind about this, outside this place that love the Lord and you know them, then you can trust them once, you've got, once you get to know them. Uh, you, you can trust them. You can trust their judgment about certain things. That's all well and good. But do not be naive. Don't throw your kids to the lions because they want them. They want them. I don't know of anything that would make a witch, a New Age practitioner, a one world religion, I don't know of anything that would, make, that would fill them with more glee than to look over at you and say, got your daughter, got your son. Oh, you can go ahead and go to your church. Go ahead. I got your children. That's what they're after. They're after our children. Now, what does that mean? That means that there are vile, sinister, godless reprobates that care nothing about anything but their own gratification. That means that they don't have a heart, they don't have a soul when it comes to relation to humanity. They have none of that. That means that they are vicious. Uh, Kirsten Powers, how many of you know who I'm talking about? You recognize the name. She is a liberal pundit on Fox News. She's on there all the time. I find myself disagreeing with her 90% of the time. Yep. I can tell you right now, when she opens her mouth, I disagree. 
What do you got to say? I disagree. <laughs> but she has just written a book. She has just written a book. The title of that, and I'll have to give you as close as I can get. The title of the book is something like this, The Silencing of America. Am I close? The Silencing of Something? I think that's it. Is that it? The Silencing of America. Think about that for a minute. The Silencing of America. This is not coming from a conservative, Ann Coulter or some of these other conservatives. This is coming from a liberal. The Silencing of America. Now, what's the thesis of the book? Political correctness has intimidated people to the point to where they are afraid to say anything that's critical of the modern New Age brainwashing scheme to destroy the minds and soul of your children. And also in the book, I haven't read her book, but I'm sure if she follows this thought, she will, she will say that the tactics used by these people would be that we know what's right and what's best for your children and for the world. The debate is over. We don't need your input. We are the elite. We will tell your children what to believe. We will tell your children what the truth is as we spin it. We are the ones who will educate you, and we don't care about hearing your side of the equation. That is a, a uh, dictator. There's another word I want to use tonight. That is a authoritarian dictator. Before we had a place called a debate where your view and my view were brought into the open in the, in, in, in the light let it stand or fall on the merits of what it says. Is there anything wrong with that? No. I believe that we should be able to debate. You don't agree with me? Fine. Let's debate the issue. What is it built upon? What do you believe? Why do you believe it? What's the foundation for your belief? I would respect you for that. Not anymore. Debate is gone. If you don't agree with the sodomite agenda in this country, you are demonized, fired from your job, called a bigot and a hater, and there is no debate. Am I, try, am I right? Amen. Have you got a hold of what I'm saying here tonight? That's the reality of it. These people who call themselves liberals are not liberal. They will put you to death when the time comes. How do you know that, preacher? They have put your free speech to death. And they may walk through that back door with their black coats on and their guns on their hip and their badges on their shirt. And they may come up here right in front of you one day and put handcuffs on me and lead me out the back door. And when they put the preachers from the pulpits in America, when they take the pastors and lock them up, and make no mistake about it, it will be by the thousands or tens of thousands. When they take the pastors and lock them up, for what, preacher? Just the other day, you know what hate speech is. You all understand. You we are, everybody's been brainwashed with hate speech. Okay. Bigoted hate speech. All right. Now, the next phase is this. Hate speech is to be criminalized. So what do you mean by that? It becomes a felony for you to get up and say something hateful about somebody's sexual orientation and so forth and so on, which means you have broken the law, which means they will come and arrest you. And so when the day comes, and a lot of it depends on what this Supreme Court does right now as it defines marriage, when the day comes that they criminalize hate speech and they come through the door and they put the handcuffs on me and take me to jail for preaching the Bible, will the church wake up? Will it wake up? 
Forget your little planned revivals. Will the church wake your past revivals? Revivals aren't doing a thing for anybody. If you have a real revival, let me tell you what a real revival will be. Let me tell you what a real revival will be. It won't be you feeling good and bringing a band in there and scheduling it in the fall and in the, in the spring. It will be when people get up with tears in their face and get down on their face trembling in the altar and confess their sin to God and turn around and confess it to that congregation and say, I am guilty. I have contributed to the downfall of this nation. I have done my part in putting the people in office that have destroyed this very country. I have done my part in not raising my family the way I should. I let my kids watch anything they want to watch on a television screen. You'll see revival. But until that time comes, don't bother with me. I don't hear it. I want to see something real from people. I've been at this too long for all this scheduled garbage that amounts to nothing. We can have a revival in here. Let me tell you what happened in here. I started preaching about this a few years ago, talking about how wicked some of these politicians were. And do you know what happened here at Temple Baptist Church? They got up and walked out the back door. Well, that's not the way to build a church. I'm not building the church. The Lord's building it. I'm just a preacher. We'll let him take care of building it. We'll let him take care of building it. They got up and they walked out the back door. They walked out the back door. What do you think God's going to do with them if they make it to the judgment seat of Christ? This is serious business. Very serious. So we'll see. We'll leave it in the hands of the Lord. I'm just the messenger. That's all I am. I'm the messenger. But I have to fulfill my responsibility. And I know that the day may come when they throw me in jail for preaching the book, for preaching the truth. And when that day comes, my only hope is this for the church, for what's left of what it calls itself the church, for whatever's left of whatever's calls itself the church in this country. My hope is this, that when the pastors wind up in jail, that they'll wake up and say, hold on. Government, you are out of order. Amen. You have completely crossed the line when our pastors can't even preach and you're throwing them into jail under whatever pretense you want to call it. We got a big problem in this country. Maybe it'll take it. I don't know. But I know one thing. Until I'm, as long as I'm in this world by the grace of God, it's not because I'm great and, I'm, and because I've got courage. It's because I believe in Christ. Amen. As long as I am in this world, I will preach the truth. Yeah. My heart ticks tonight because I know this brother, I watched him the other night, he's having a hard time getting his breath. Brother Ed Williams, having a hard time breathing. I know what that's like. Some of you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. You don't have a clue. I know what it's like to try, try to get a breath. And that breath of air is precious indeed. The reason I was like that is because my heart had gone into congestive heart failure. I'm up here tonight before you because God has restored me, put me where he wants me. As long as I'm in this world, I'm going to serve him by the grace of God. Amen. And then if the Lord says now, if the Lord says to me one night here in this pulpit now, preacher, I'm done with you. You've done what I've called you to do. I'm coming to get you. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And if that means dropping right in front of you, I'll drop right in front of you. For the glory of God. Amen. Now you got to live with it. Father, in thy name we pray. I've told them the truth. I've told them the truth. And I pray that you'd bless your word to their heart, to their soul, to their spirit. And those that will hear this later, and those that already heard this tonight over the internet. I pray that they'd think about what I'm saying. I pray for those who call themselves liberals tonight. But who are the liberals that have enough sense to understand what freedom of speech is about. And how wonderful, what a wonderful gift that was handed to us by our forefathers with that First Amendment. Even though they may not agree with me, they appreciate the fact that I've got the right to say what I say. I pray that you'd speak to their heart, to their soul, to every American in this country, every last one of them that cherishes the values that made America what it is. And not let a group of vicious fanatics 
that want to take our freedom away from us, the freedom of speech. Don't not let them do it. I pray that in Jesus' name. But whatever comes, even so, Lord Jesus, whatever comes, by the grace of God, Lord, I give my life to Thee. I live because of Thee. My heart beats because of Thee. You're the reason I'm here. In Thy blessed, sweet, righteous name I pray, and amen. Let's stand up.